Hi, I'm Chris from Umano, and welcome to this series in building data-inspired ways of working. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about guiding principles to set your developer experience up for success through the use of metrics. Before we dive into what guiding principles are, it's really important just to take stock again of why metrics matter and how they improve team's experience and working culture. A metric as a recap is simply a quantitative or qualitative signal that provides insight into the health of your team's way of working, your culture, your productivity, or your collaboration. They matter because ultimately they create alignment, accountability, autonomy, and action. In other words, their inputs into better outcomes for your ways of working and creating a great developer experience. We know metrics can be misused and often through weaponization, they can undermine psychological safety and ultimately the culture that you're working so hard to try and build to ensure great team, great motivation, and ultimately great work to deliver value to customers. And so it's really critical in this context to ensure you articulate a set of guiding principles that enrolls teams to really adopt and get comfortable with in owning their metrics and their data so that they can be aligned, autonomous, accountable, and ultimately confident in taking action. So let's dive in to some of the guiding principles that you can think about. We're going to talk about generic guiding principles for an organization or a company, and then dive into some specific guiding principles that really relate to building your developer experience. So when we think generally about setting up some guiding principles in articulating why you're adopting metrics and how you're going to use them, we really encourage teams of companies to think about how metrics align to their values. In other words, where they're symbiotic, where they're really enabling and empowering the living and breathing nature of your values in your working culture. The second guiding principle that we encourage teams to think about is what's the primary objective? Why are you rolling out metrics in the first place? And is this about team self-empowerment, self-growth and experience? Or is it about company-wide improvements or an organizational hotspot that needs immediate attention and focus for improvement, as an example? So again, be really clear on the broader objective as to why you want to roll out metrics to improve your ways of working. Thirdly, I think it's critical to name psychological safety as a guiding principle. How are you using metrics in a safe way and how are you intentionally embedding safety into the use of metrics? In this case, be clear in articulating how metrics will and will not be used to elevate and support your developer experience. So for example, will they or will they not be used for individual performance reviews? Or, and or, are they there to really enhance team self-improvement so that they can, in an autonomous way, get insights into how they work and therefore take action to optimize and reduce friction? The next principle is really to define and articulate who are the champions as you embed your metric-driven way of working. So here, it could be a developer experience team, it could be an agile guild, or team leads in their own right. Next is to articulate how um, you expect adoption to be carried out. In this uh, instance, is there a principle that says, we encourage teams to opt in to a metrics driven program, or this is a company wide way of working and we're encouraging, we're basically supporting all teams to adopt and embed metrics into their ways of working. Next, define a principle around accountability. Here, we're talking about being accountable through metrics to team goals, 
organizational goals or company goals? In other words, how will metrics enable accountability at each of those levels? In the same way, define a principle around autonomy. How you see metrics really uh, serving team autonomy or practice development within teams' ways of working. And so therefore, a principle around how teams can apply insights from metrics to refine their unique ways of working is a really principle to consider. Finally, in the broader context of an organization's guiding principles, we encourage you to define a principle around transparency. In other words, who's receiving what information at what time and in what way. For example, do teams only get access to their information or can all teams access all insights from all other teams um, to really encourage that cross-learning and transferability of practice, growth um, and experimentation? In this case, you're really knocking out any subversive use of withholding information or limiting information only at leadership and therefore creating and perpetuating an environment of mistrust. Now, let's take a little look more deeply at the focused guiding principles to build your developer experience. The first principle here is around reinforcing that metrics are there for growth and not judgment. Here, the metric is really aimed at supporting a and fostering a continuous improvement environment, one that accelerates learning and therefore growth and therefore speed to deliver quality outcomes to your customers. The second principle is around having a developer-centric focus. So here we want to ensure a principle that states metrics being reflective of and supportive of developers' needs and their own workflows, unique to their ways of working. So an example here would be tracking time spent in context switching to prioritize reducing interruptions. A third principle would be around how metrics exist or are being used to elevate joy and engagement. And here we wanna make sure that that principle talks about the use of metrics to identify and minimize sources of frustration and blockages and really encourages how teams can track and build feedback loop times to enhance their flow, as an example. A fourth principle relating to developer experience could name something like context being key. In other words, we want to interpret metrics within the broader developer experience context, recognizing the unique team dynamics. And so, as an example here, a longer cycle time may reflect a very explicit learning loop on a complex problem. And so therefore, you're assigning meaning in the context of that principle as to why maybe there's an outlier result for a metric. The next principle relates to transparency and collaboration in the context of developer experience. And so here we're talking about a principle that really supports metrics being used to inspire open, robust discussion and conversation, and therefore the co-creation of solutions, again, to really foster collaboration and alignment and focus on what needs to happen and how teams come together and rally together to deliver those outcomes. The next would be to create a principle that highlights how teams can iterate and refine in the context of DevEx. So this is about a principle that articulates being able to continuously assess the impact of metrics on developer experience and workflows. Again, we don't want any adverse effects or impacts from continuously measuring something that may not set us up for success. And so we want to continuously review and adjust metrics based on the goals that you're seeking or the outcomes that you're wanting to improve and, and, and equally um, disincentivize unintentional behaviors or unproductive behaviors. And so that is a wrap up of the guiding principles, both generically across a company, but specifically for developer experience when thinking about rolling out metrics and, ar and articulating with clarity and intention why you want to use metrics, how they're going to be used, and ultimately uh, what um, uh, level of autonomy 
and uh, engagement teams have so that you can really foster that uh, high performance culture in the way that insights are applied to ways of working. When we think about rolling out metrics in the context of, of developer experience, it's also, again, really important to not just talk about guiding principles, but the benefits and the impacts in building your DevX culture. So undoubtedly, it's about improving productivity. You know, metrics are there to help reduce friction, provide observability to optimize workflows and get greater collaboration. In the context of greater collaboration, for example, in the context of DevX, you want to look at metrics like review time and the engagement across team members to support those smoother handoff periods. You also want to build empowered developers. And by providing insights from metrics, individuals and teams collectively are far more confident in advocating for what they need, when they need it, and aligning stakeholders around how things need to get done. And ultimately, in the context of developer experience, metrics are there to increase joy. You want, through the context of being teams being seen, for teams to feel recognized, for teams to observe their own improvements and celebrate the successes just as much as the insights that relate to how teams can optimize and improve ways of working. And in that holistic context, look at elevating team performance of both for productivity and their engagement. When you think about rolling out metrics in the context of your developer experience, think about the following aspects. Number one, you really want to collaborate in selecting the metrics that are there to define an organizational or a cross-functional or cross-team view of uh, providing observability into ways of working. So you want to involve teams into defining the metrics that matter the most for them. You want to pilot, start small with feedback loops and feedback groups so that teams can get literate and then comfortable in embedding metrics into their way of working and the jobs to be done and referencing insights from those metrics as they conclude or interact with the jobs to be done in their cycles of work. You want to absolutely be celebrating success and clearly you want to be investing in tooling. You want to automate this end to end as much as possible and you want to minimize the need for relying on others to be building dashboards, customizing. You really just want to plug and play and equip teams so that they're set up with their metrics that can be accessed from all tool sets and very precise, uh, uh, relatable uh, insights for the jobs to be done in their cycles of work. And so finally, as a call to action in thinking about rolling out metrics in your developer experience, definitely think about that team level of commitment. In other words, partners partner with teams to co-create the metrics that matter most for them, build literacy around the what, the why, and the how, and ensure they're really comfortable in the application of insights to jobs to be done so that they can take action and are empowered to take action to optimize and reduce friction. Build a support network. So think about how you're fostering cross-team conversation and providing coaching, resources, learning opportunities across team to team to lift the literacy and the skill base and knowledge across all teams and not just for a pocket or a subset of teams that are already comfortable in using metrics. And finally, really articulate that shared vision that unites teams and highlights how developer experience leads to ultimately better products, happier teams, organizational performance improvements, and ultimately delighted customers that are the recipients of high quality work from the teams that have a great experience and joy from the work that they're undertaking in a highly productive, sustainable work environment.